This morning, I want to let you know that I honor everything in you and about you. I honor your dreams, your challenges, your fears, your worries, your great concerns, those things that trouble you, those things that may stir your heart, those joys and those celebrations, all of it I give honor to, and I invite you to do the same. Because what is honor but to respect those things, to find them as worthy, those things that you've gone through in your life? So often we want to dismiss those challenges that we face, the ups and downs. We want to dismiss fears and release them. We're very positive people. And we believe in the power of some positive affirmations, but so often we want to say, you know what, I guess I don't even want to take time to address that I may be in fear or I may be worrying or I may be stressed or I may be this or that. So hold on. I want to tell you why I want you to honor those moments in your life. You see, we're learning in this journey of life how to live and move and breathe, as it says in Acts chapter 17, the, to how to live and move in the presence of God and in this dwelling place of this, this earth that we live in. We're learning how. We didn't come with an owner's manual. Did anyone come with one when you were born? Was that stork? Did they drop by the little manual that says, here's how Norma's going to live, or here's how John's going to exist, or here's how he will operate or... No, none of you got that owner's manual. You see, we're learning on a day-to-day -day basis. We're discovering as we go. We're learning as little children of divine offspring. We're learning as the sons and daughters of God. We're learning as the very revelation of God, how to live and dwell in this world. And we're finding great discoveries. And one of the discoveries I want to offer us today is that we take time to acknowledge some of those challenges, some of those emotions, some of those fears, some of those lacks, sense of lack, some of those things that we're going through in our life. Not just sweeping them under the rug, but taking a moment to acknowledge them for a divine purpose. Because what we're really learning how to do is learning how to love ourselves. This is something very important because we're not often very good, nor have we really been taught uh, the power that comes to our lives as we love ourselves. Because you're the divine revelation of God. To love yourself is to love God. For you're loving the creation of God. You're loving all that is of God. And how important it is that you embrace this and say, I love myself. And I want to learn to love myself better. So I want you to know that I honor you. I respect you in all the journeys you're going through. Some of you have shared, you know what, I'm having some tough times. I'm having some ups and downs. I'm having this and that that I'm going through. I'm having some health problems. We'd love to think that we're all great people of faith, that we're just standing so strong that we can say, I have no worries whatsoever. But we do have bows. We do have concerns. We want to honor them. And I want you to take time today to just honor those challenges for a moment. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's as we love ourselves, we love everything about ourselves, and we remove all those judgments. You know, because those judgments about our lives that say, oh, you know, I should know better than this. I should be better. I should live better. I should think better. I should be more full of faith. I have all these kind of judgments about what I should. And sometimes I want to beat myself over the head, and really, I'm a little hard on myself as to how I live on the day-to-day -day journey. We feel like we may need to be perfect, challenge-free. But I want us to step back and look at those challenges and take note of these obstacles, those obstacles that have come your way. Because everything in life has value and everything is an important milestone. Everything in life has value and everything, every emotion, every experience is an important milestone for you to go through. Now, this may seem crazy, but it's happening in your life because what's happening is there to help you reach your highest and best, to help you to reach your potential. We all want to unfold our best. We want it to, we're opening up, we said today. We're opening up to the good. But in that opening up, sometimes we have to be open to some of those obstacles, some of those worries, those fears, those stresses, those emotions, those highs and lows that we go through in our life. And I want to give you a revolutionary approach to this healing process as we address these obstacles. And that is to embrace a mantra that everything is here to help me. Everything I'm going through is here 
to help me. Would you say that with me? Everything is here to help me. Say it again. Everything is here to help me. Now this time say it like you believe it, because I'm not so sure that there were voices in there that spoke with such confidence, okay? Maybe there's a little doubt in the background that says, I don't know about everything. A couple of things maybe, but not everything, Reverend. Do you really think everything is? Yes, so let's say it together. Everything he is here to help me. Because what is this mantra all about? It's a mantra of faith. Because mantras help us keep our focus, you know? If you're in meditation and you're trying to be emptying out, releasing everything, and in the very power of prayerful meditation, sometimes all these things come in to distract us, you know? They're like the shiny things that lure us away, and before you know it, we're following after them. And we need to have something that pulls us back to our focus. So we may have a word that's a mantra, and we may say the word love or peace or joy or whatever it may be that you've chosen as a mantra that brings you back to the centered place and focus. Everything is here to help me is that mantra of great faith. That in the moments when all these emotions that we're talking about, all these obstacles, all these challenges, all these things that we're going to take a moment to acknowledge in our life, they're here, but they're here to help us. So we're not afraid of them. We, we may face fear, but we're not afraid of fear because we know that it's here to help us. And I'm going to explain that a little bit more. So hang with me as we unfold in this understanding, as we go through this journey together. Because as you face these obstacles and you speak this mantra of faith, it says, I know everything is here to help me. What I'm going through right now is here to help me. I don't need to be afraid of this. It's here to help me. It's here to heal me. It's here to do some work within me. It's here for a divine purpose. It's here to help me move to my highest and best. We may think that's a little crazy because sometimes we don't get this and we think, well, things uh, don't help us if they're inconvenient. You can't say everything is there to help me because a lot of stuff in life becomes inconvenient, you know? Uh, people who don't show up on time, traffic makes it inconvenient. There's all kinds of challenges that come on the rise in our day-to-day -day journey, unexpected things that become inconvenient in the journey of our life. We say, I didn't want that to happen. I didn't expect that to happen, but wow. Did you ever think that maybe it's there to help you? It's there for a divine purpose maybe even to heal you, to work through something within your life. Your anger, your frustration, your impatience, all these things are there calling with a red light experience that says flashing, flashing, flashing. Here's a learning opportunity. Here's a learning opportunity. Here's for you to do some, to work through something within your own life. Wow. You see how that changes? When suddenly we embrace that mantra, everything is here to help me. This is here to help me. It's not bad. I'm not passing judgments. It's not this is really good because I don't feel that it's good. It just is. And it is here for a purpose of helping me to unfold my highest and best. And that's that voice of faith. Some of us really want to try very hard in the journey of our lives, and we try too hard. It's because often we come to the place where we put more power in the thought that it's not going to work out than putting power into the thought it is working out. So when we face these challenges, these inconveniences, worry, lack, problems, you can go on the list. You know what I'm talking about that may be applicable for your life. When you face it, sometimes it's like, ah, this is a great challenge. It's a problem. It's not going to work out. We put so much energy into it. It's not going to work out. Then we have to work really hard, don't we? We have to work and push and pull and drag through all the things of life when really when we begin to be the people of faith and take and embrace this wonderful mantra, everything is here to help me, suddenly I realize this is, I can move through this experience with ease. I can move through this experience with grace. I can move through this experience knowing that my highest and best is unfolding for me. We just have trouble seeing the highest and best in all things. And that's our real challenge. You know, uh, Robert and I are working on our backyard and we're doing some changes and uh, digging some holes and the neighbors have stopped by and said, uh, what's going on here? You know, uh, it's kind of a mess right now. You've got some holes dug and this and that and you've got plants sitting out and what's going on here? I don't, I don't quite see it. 
And so sometimes I'm going, walking through the backyard with them and say, well, here we're going to put a weeping maple tree and here we're going to do this and there's going to be a pathway here. I don't see it, they'll say. Now, I see it. I see it because the vision is there. I have embraced it and I see it, but they don't. And quite often that's in our own journey. We have a hard time seeing that all things are working together for our good. We can't say, I don't see it. All I see is the mess. All I see is the confusion. I don't see the final plan. I don't see it all working out for me. And we have our difficulty in seeing it. And this is where we embrace that mantra over and over again. Everything is working out. Everything is working for me. It's working out, and that enables us to be that kind of people of faith that helps us to see that the end is uh, going to be coming all together, and it's going to be a finished project. You see, oftentimes we don't look at the best-case scenario. We invest all of our energy in the worst-case scenario. And that's where we have a lot of challenges in our life, because all we can think of is we go instantly to worst case scenario. Something happens in our life. Oh, but you know, this is going to lead to this. It's going to take us to there. It's going to go here. It's going to go there. Oh, and we spiral in a downward level of fear. Everything is here to help me. Everything is working for my good. Everything is unfolding uh, in forms of blessing to unfold my highest and best now takes and lifts us up and moves us away from worst case scenario to suddenly walking in best case scenario. And how many of you, when you get a bill, you think of the best case scenario, you know? Oh, best case scenario is I can pay this and I'll have money left over. Oh, no, we're like, oh, I got to pay this and there'll be nothing left. You see, we've got to switch. And when we see that everything is working for our good, it helps us to make a change. You see, this is what faith is. Faith is going to enjoy the vacation before you even gone on the vacation. That's what faith is. Uh huh. Faith is like, I've already enjoyed the vacation, and you haven't even gone yet, but I've already enjoyed it. But that's what living in faith is all about. You see, every single day, it's like, I see the good, and I, I haven't experienced it all, but I see the good. I see everything working out for me, and I see it, and I feel it, and I'm enjoying it because everything is working out. And all your neighbors are saying, I don't see that it's working out. I don't see that it's coming. And remember, that's them. You work with your own faith. Let those voices be voices in the distance. As you press on and you begin to say, I am enjoying my vacation before I'm even gone on vacation. I'm seeing the good before the good is even unfolding. I'm already living and walking in faith that everything is working out together for my highest and best. Even before it has completely accomplished that goal. So I want you to take a moment to feel these emotions, challenges that you have. Take a moment because there may be something that's coming in your life or you've been going through that's speaking to you over and over again because it wants to heal it. It wants to heal it. You see, all of life is unfolding of our highest and best. It's a healing journey. And all these fears, worries, apprehensions, challenges that you're coming through, they're coming through to your life for the purpose of healing something within you. And when you are truly rooted in this faith that says everything is working to help me, everything is coming together for good, you're not even hypnotized by anybody else's words or contacts or how, or how they act around you because your mantra is keeping you and your conduct in an amazing way because... All things that are said around you, you know, in deep within, you know that it's all working for your good. You know that it's already going to be a benefit for you. So you act differently. So someone offends you, says something hurtful, but you know it's about them. But you know what they said may have triggered an emotion within you. It says, hmm, I need to heal that. I need to work on that. I need to maybe address that. And you can say, thank you for helping me. What? Yes. When someone comes to you and says something hurtful to you or something that may come to you, you may turn to them and say, thank you for helping me. And they go, how did I help you? How did I help you? I said something like, you know, that should have been hurtful. No, how? thank you for helping me. Because you help me know that the journey is within me. And I need to work on some healing 
Because if it's a tender spot, if it's a boo-boo, it's a hurt spot, a black and blue spot on my soul. And when you touched it, oh, oh, I'm, I'm hurting, I'm in pain. I need to heal that, right? You know those black and blue spots on your body where you've fallen. And, oh, oh, it hurts when you touch it. That's the same way when someone has touched a sensitive spot within your emotions. And you say, ooh, I need to heal that. I need to work on that. I realize what's going on here is in me. What's going on in the words you said? Those are your words. It's all about you. But you just triggered something in my response. And the way I responded to that says, hmm, I need to do a little healing work here. I need to heal something. And so you might be addressing that uh, these things that are coming to you, maybe emotions that are tricking up with you. This is, oh, it's telling me I need to correct this. I need to heal this. I need to make a change here. I need to address that. Spirit of God is speaking to me right now, and this is the healing work and where I need to direct my attention. What if a homeless man comes to you saying, I need some money, and you give them some cash, and then you say to yourself, hmm, Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me. Homeless man goes, how did I help you? I asked for some money. You help me see how abundant I am. And I need to see that first time to time because I realized I could give you something. And now I acknowledge how abundant I am. Someone may have said something to you and suddenly you realize, wow, thank you for helping me because I see this is a person I don't want to be. I don't want to rise up in anger. I don't want to be someone who is wounded or hurt. I don't want to be that person who retaliates. I don't want to be that. Thank you for showing me what I don't want to be. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me in some ways that's helped me to say, uh, you've said something painful and hurt me, but thank you for showing me that I have the power to survive and I will not wilt. I will not fail. I will not fall apart. You just showed me my inner strength, the divine source within me at work. Thank you for helping me. So I wanted you to say that out loud, maybe as uh, you walk away from someone in a hurtful experience and you just say, thank you for helping me. Uh -huh. Thank you for helping me because as you do, you change the whole energy of the experience, right? You know, uh, someone... Um, had written me a letter, uh, and they had said, you know, we're no longer needing your services, and I was working uh, in a denominational capacity, and there wasn't even a word of thank you. <coughs> and I just thought, wow, not even a word of appreciation, nothing. And it's said, oh, thank you for helping me. Thank you for changing the whole energy. Rather than holding any kind of resentment and feeling in some way that they didn't appreciate, I began to say, thank you for helping me because I maybe need to address something. Did I think I was all that and so valuable and was my ego out of control? Whatever it may need, I needed to do some work. And I had to say, thank you. Thank you for that spiritual gift. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for making it possible. I think about when I was in seventh grade and those kids harassing me and bullying me and making my life miserable. And I have to turn back and say, thank you for doing some work within me because you made me stronger. Today, I look back and I think, thank you. I owe a lot to those seventh graders because they enabled and instilled within me the strength of God that was always there, but I woke up to it as a result of that experience. Thank you for helping me. Uh, thank you for uh, the wonderful journey that you've brought me on. I want you to take your greatest pain and see that you are strong enough to survive it and say thank you for whatever you've gone through. Take that person who hurt you the most and say to the image of them, thank you for helping me. Think about that person right now. Who hurt you the most? Who is it in the journey of your life? And look back and say thank you. Because through that pain, through that hurt that I didn't sweep under the rug, but I addressed, I realized, I overcame it. I'm strong. I learned how to love. Oh, there's so many wonderful ways that healing happens within our life. We may not always understand that circumstances that we go through are the unfolding for our highest and best. Now, Jesus... Tempted in the wilderness, 
beautiful example of our day-to-day -day life, tempted with all kinds of opportunities for fame, fortune, for this or that, if he would only do what the tempter, what the adversary had said and invited him to do. But he overcame that and instead became a great victor. Jesus, at the wedding of Cana, a very embarrassing moment where the host is all out of wine. And Jesus says, wait a minute, it's not my time but he steps forward and a miraculous miracle unfolds. And in that experience, he finds his highest and best unfolding for him. How about the time when the Canaanite woman came to Jesus and tugged on him and Jesus was preaching to the Jewish community and this Canaanite woman, an outsider, someone from an outside community, someone from who is not Jesus's target market, shall we say. She says, Jesus, give me even just the, the dogs deserve the crumbs off the table. Canaanite people in those culture in that way were thought, been thought of as dogs. You read this analogy of what may seem like full of racial descriptions and judgments, and yet you see how it changed Jesus, that his ministry broadened to be inclusive in a greater way than ever before. Every experience you're going through, everything is there to help you. Do you realize that? Then what are we going to say? Thank you for this gift. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for this challenge. Thank you for this problem. It's been a gift for me because it's helping me to go to the highest level that I'm called upon to live. Every pain you've gone through has helped you. Every challenge, every obstacle, everything that you've gone, it's not for you to feel a victim, but for you to feel a victor to realize that you are the victor over all of these things, not the victim. Daniel in the lion's den. You can imagine the king, his good friend, has been led by others to betray him. Daniel, who's been a faithful servant to the king, but was committed to praying three times a day. And his adversaries got together and went up to the king and said, how about we make a decree appealing to the king's ego and saying a decree that no one should pray to anything other than you, O king. And the king's great ego said, ooh, I like that. Let's make that decree. Forgetting that Daniel was faithful in his spiritual practice, he read 365 days for richer living every single day, I'm sure, <laughs> and attended John's class at 9.30 on Sundays, I'm sure. But it was his spiritual practice that he did every single day. And now all of a sudden, when they is caught in the spiritual practice by the adversaries, his enemies, and he's led before the king, the king says, dang, nabbit, I made that crazy decree on my ego, and now my good friend Daniel is going to have to be thrown in the lion's den. But in the lion's den, Daniel could have cried and said, look at me, poor, poor me. Poor, poor me. All I did was be faithful to God and look where I am. All I did was work on my spiritual practices and look where I am. Now I'm going to be eaten by the lions. But that's not how the story goes. In Daniel, you can imagine him saying, thank you for this lion's den experience because I now see the value of reading 365 every day. I now see the value of my spiritual practice. I now see the value of being faithful to my spiritual work. I now see it because it helped me to be the overcomer, not the victim, but the victor. So when we look at these examples, how about Samson in the Bible speaking to us the very same way? It's our story. Samson, the mighty prophet, the one who with the long hair was the strong man and the, the one who was overcoming any adversaries. And deceived by Delilah, he offers the insight that his strength is in his hair. And when he falls asleep, she becomes the supercuts of the Bible and gives him that butch haircut, you know, high and tight, flat on the top, you know, <laughs> extra, you know, looking trendy and hip, but almost shaved head. And Samson loses his strength, but only to realize that I'm not the victim, I'm the victor, because suddenly the hair began to grow out and the strength that he always had was there for him. 
And in the end, he was put between the pillars of the adversaries. And there, chained between the pillars, mustered all the strength and said, I am so grateful for that experience because that experience showed me I am the overcomer. I am grateful for this. It was a gift because it enabled me to value what I have and to understand the importance of what is already God has bestowed on me. And that I have so much to be grateful for. And here's our problem. We forget to be in gratitude about all that God has already equipped us with. God already gave you the abilities to be the victor. You're already equipped with it. It's already innately within you. But somehow you have given up to the stories of those who would say, you're not strong enough, you're not able, but you are. You are. And so we awaken that within us through each and every experience. So it's when we honor those challenges and honor those moments and honor those obstacles and honor those things that may be a, a fear and worry, we honor those moments that we, we felt it. We don't stay there, but we honor it and say, I know all things, everything is working for me. It's all there, and that's my faith. What happens then is in that gratitude, our conduct changes, how we react to everybody else and how we walk in this world. It's all changing because it's the truest dem demonstration of what we believe, right? How you act is the truest demonstration of what you believe. So if you really believe this, then you act not as a victim, but as a victor, not in any way as succumb to the pressures or stress or worries or fears, but you walk every day with your head held high and say, this is working for me. This is working for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This challenge, this issue, this uh, difficulty, I'm, it's working for me. It's unfolding my highest and best. And it shows you these areas that you may need to find healing in your life, that you may need to correct, that you may need to address in your journey of your life, that you may need to release. Oh, how beautiful it is for us. So you read a scripture today, a scripture lesson in the opening of our gathering today, and it's also on the back of your bulletin. And what does it say? Blessed, meaning happy, is the man or woman, that's you or me, who per perseveres, meaning who doesn't give up in the midst of any obstacles or challenges or trials. You don't give up because you know what? Everything's working for you. Because when he or she has stood the test, and what's the test? test is, do I really realize it's all working for my good? I have nothing to be afraid of. When you withstand the test to see that everything is here to help me, you'll receive the crown of life, the reward of a glorious life that God has already promised. God has already promised. The universe has already promised you a glorious life. It's there for you. It's your choice. So when we choose and we embrace this, this wonderful understanding, it's all working for me. Everything is here to help me, to help me. Amen.